and welcome to 15 Days of Festive Fear, day number four. And I have two stories for you today and the last story comes from the 19th of August 2023. And story number one comes from Grace. I've always been a very big believer in the paranormal and I've carried that around with me since I was four years old watching cheesy ghost documentaries on TV. One night when I was around 14, I woke up in the middle of the night to feeling a heavy weight on top of me. I was still half asleep so I assumed it might be my dog who had wandered into my room looking for extra cuddles. Odd since she is a pretty tiny dog and doesn't weigh much to leave such a heavy feeling. To my horror when I looked up I could see the outline of a spider-like being. The lines of its body were dotted out to show its form. It had human-like arms except they were long and gangly. Almost similar to the smoke monster in Stranger Things. It was making a clicking sound I can only describe as when someone unlocks their jaw, but this was over and over, and it kept getting closer and closer to my face. I was petrified, my whole body was stiff like a board. The only thing I could turn was my head. I shut my eyes tightly as the clicking sound continued to get louder. I was raised a devout Roman Catholic, and I remembered my grandfather who used to be a deacon telling me whenever something comes to trouble you at night, say a Hail Mary. I turned my head with my eyes closed tight and muttered the only words of the prayer that would come out, Hail Mary. The clicking stopped almost instantly and the weight on my body disappeared. I could move my arms and legs again. Without hesitation, I ran across the hall to my parents' room, sobbing. My mom held my shaking body in her arms and calmed me down the best she could but I refused to tell her or my dad what had happened. That is how terrifying this experience was. Now I know that this does seem like a classic case of sleep paralysis and I've since tried to convince myself that it was. Maybe saying the Hail Mary helped me to wake up from that nightmare and helped calm my mind. But till this day, I do believe there was something in my room that night that tried and failed to get me and my little prayer saved me. I feel like anything that is spider-like and gangly is uh, terrifying, absolutely terrifying. For some reason, all I can picture is the puppet from the film Possum, that sort of Voldemort spider puppet, which is petrifying in puppet form and in paranormal form. I can only imagine your absolute terror when you woke up and realised there was a clicking spider creature on top of you. Uh, It's not something that's on my to-do list anyway. And I'm going to be really honest, I don't have any experience with sleep paralysis, but I will say that, you know, plenty of people have spoken to me about their experiences with sleep paralysis and how they get out of it. Shout out to Alice from the Ghost Gig podcast, who has sleep paralysis and talks about it very candidly on her podcast, The Ghost Gig. And one of the things that does seem to work for people is to try and speak. If you can speak a word, you can break the paralysis. If I were you, Do you know what? I'd lean into it being sleep paralysis. If it makes you feel better, if you don't want to be thinking about big spider thing coming into your life and fucking up your world, I would absolutely lean into it being sleep paralysis. Customers are rushing to your store. Do you have a point of sale system you can trust or is it a real POS? You need Shopify for retail. Shopify POS is your command center for your retail store. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify has everything you need to sell in person. With Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers in line and online. Shopify helps you to drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. Get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system or use Shopify's POS Go Mobile device for a battle tested solution. Plus Shopify's award winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Do retail right with Shopify. 
Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com forward slash real life ghost stories, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash real life ghost stories to take your retail business to the next level today. That's shopify.com slash real life ghost stories. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Around this time of year, there's such a huge emphasis on gift giving. And while I love gift giving, I also think it is incredibly important to be able to give to yourself in whatever way you see fit. It might be as simple as allowing yourself to have a luxurious bubble bath, but the holiday season is a great time to start giving back to yourself. And would you believe it? I think the best way to give back to yourself is by going to therapy. You live with yourself every single day and therapy is a really good way to empower yourself. It is also a really good way to learn positive coping skills and to learn how to set boundaries. And look, like I've said before, it's not just for people who've experienced major trauma. Therapy is beneficial for everybody. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible and suited to your schedule, which is incredibly important in 2023 and coming into 2024. All you need to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. It is the season of giving. And I think it's super important that you also recognise that you can give yourself what you need. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Real Life Ghost Stories today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Real Life Ghost Stories. Today's episode is brought to you by Factor. The holiday season can be such a jam-packed, busy time. And you might be thinking, how am I going to fit in nutritious, flavorful meals to fuel me on these crazy, busy days? Factor is America's number one ready to eat meal delivery service. And they can help you to eat well for breakfast, lunch and dinner by offering chef prepared, dietitian approved, ready to eat meals delivered straight to your door. Sometimes when life gets too hectic, meal prepping ends up taking a back seat. But with Factor, you can skip the meal planning, the grocery shopping, the chopping, the prepping, the cleaning up, etc. And get Factor's fresh, never frozen meals delivered to your door. They are literally ready in two minutes. So all you have to do is heat it up and enjoy. You can choose from over 35 chef crafted meals every single week. And these meals can be chosen to meet your specific preferences. So whether you are vegan or veggie or you want extra protein, whatever it is, head to factormeals.com slash real life ghost stories 50 and use code real life ghost stories 50 to get 50% off. That's code real life ghost stories 50 at factormeals.com slash real life ghost stories 50 to get 50% off. And story number two comes from Kaylee and Evie. Now, I'm not sure if it's Evie or Evie. It's spelt like Evie. So I apologise if I have pronounced that wrong. But we're going to go for Kaylee and Evie. And just please don't hate me if it's actually Evie. I've always had an interest in the paranormal, even from a young age. I'm told I have an overactive imagination, but I seem to have a knack for hearing all of the bumps in the night more than those around me. This particular story is about one of my more involved encounters. My husband and I moved in together in 2010. We were recent college grads but had dated for six years and felt it was the right time to share a roof. We had searched high and low for a reasonable apartment or home to rent but everything was out of our budget. After several failed attempts, my dad suggested we complete some updates to my grandparents' home that he now owned and the bonus was that we could live there rent-free. Months before we moved in together, my grandfather had passed away at the age of 93. Walter was so wonderful to my sister and me when we were growing up, often teasing us or sharing his sugary snacks. He and my grandmother lived in that house for nearly 30 years before she passed away. He stayed in the home for several years after, until his health forced him into a retirement living centre, He constantly told my dad and aunts that he wanted to go home, but they knew it was safest for him to stay under someone's close watch and care. 
When his time came, all of our family was together in the room and he peacefully took his last breath. I had all but forgotten about the house when my dad first suggested it. There were many rooms that needed repair, but after three months of hard work, it was move-in ready. It felt a little strange living in my grandparents' home with my then-boyfriend, a home that I had grown up in, but it also felt safe because of our warm memories. Several months of living there went by without a hitch. We brought home a Labrador retriever, held a big holiday party for our close friends and felt we were truly at home. That Christmas, my husband bought me a delicate bracelet. It was beautiful, but a bit more dressed up than I normally wore. I kept it safe in my bedroom jewellery case until we had a special event to wear it to. One day, after noticing how little it had been worn, he nudged me to put it on for work. I agreed, feeling bad about it, and had him put it on for me. I went about work as usual that day until it came time for my evening exercise class held outdoors. I distinctly remember taking the bracelet off and putting it into the zipper section of my wallet for safekeeping until I was home. I went to exercise, came home to shower, and then went back to my wallet for my bracelet. Upon opening, though, I discovered the bracelet was gone. I panicked. The next day and many after that, I went back to every place I had been. I parked exactly where I'd parked the night before and walked the park edge to see if it had fallen out of my wallet when I got out of the car and nothing. I checked in every crevice of my car to see if I'd dropped it. Nope. I checked the bathroom at work where I had changed. Nothing. I looked over my desk. I checked the pockets of the pants I had worn. I tore everything out of my purse over and over again and nothing. It was gone. I relented that I had lost it and tried to think of what to do next. I could tell him, but I was too afraid to let him down, so I did a pretty stupid thing instead. After a month of checking and hoping, I ordered the same bracelet online without telling my husband. I had it shipped to work so as not to disappoint him. I know major grimace face. Upon its arrival, I brought it home and put it in the same spot that I'd kept the other one. A week or so later, I wore the bracelet to work, but made a point not to show my husband so that nothing seemed out of character. I went to work and returned home that evening before him. I went to my bedroom to take off the bracelet when I noticed something glimmering on top of a pair of pyjamas I'd washed, folded and left on the dresser the night before. I looked closer and saw it was the original bracelet laid in a perfectly straight line. I knew it was the original because I was still wearing the new one and I knew it hadn't been there the night before because I had done the laundry myself. Now, okay, you might think that perhaps it had snagged on pyjamas in the wash all along and I just hadn't noticed, but that would be impossible because the pyjamas were borrowed from a friend the weekend before. I hadn't done the wash in between them, and I clearly would have seen it while folding said pyjamas and placing them on the dresser. More so, the bracelet was not stuck to any fabric. It was placed in a perfectly straight line down the middle of the folded pants. My instant response was to call my husband and ask him how he had found out that I had lost the original bracelet. I believed he had placed it there after noticing the new one I was wearing and I immediately began apologising for being a big fat liar about the whole situation. His genuine reaction was, What are you talking about? Wait, you bought a new one because you lost the old one? When did you lose the other one? Why didn't you just tell me? I, of course, then relayed the entire story. He swore up and down that he had nothing to do with it And after hanging up the phone, I sat there in silence before a feeling came over me. I was sitting in the exact spot my grandfather, the one who loved teasing and tricking us, used to sit in for dinner. In my mind, a picture of Grandpa popped up. For many Christmases, my grandfather would gift my grandmother jewellery, rings, bracelets, necklaces. He loved giving her something shiny and beautiful. They didn't have much money in their lifetime together, so his gestures were always heartfelt and sincere. With the obviously missing item being another heartfelt gift of jewellery, along with his love of teasing, I felt that it had to be tied to him in some way. It was just another one of his ways of showing me that he's still around. 
For months and to this day, I've nagged my husband to just tell the truth. You did it, didn't you? You planted it. He still promises me up and down that he didn't do it. He loves calling me out when I'm wrong, so I guess I have to believe him. I know that was windy, but I have to share the second thing that happened in the same house that solidified my thought that my grandfather was still hanging around. I promised to keep it shorter and sweet. Not long after the duelling bracelet incident, I had an encounter in the basement of the home. The basement acted as part one car garage and part livable space. If you can picture it, the stairs from the house to the basement split two rooms with a landing at the bottom that opened to two doorways, the left side being the laundry and the right acting as a sparse living space. We often parked in the garage, the back of the basement, but would walk through the living room area to get to the stairs. As I was starting down to the basement one morning to head off to work, I was surprised to turn on the lights to find my wooden sweater rack sitting squarely at the bottom of the stairs. Now, the sweater rack normally ran parallel with the staircase in the laundry area, about a solid three feet from the entry to the door. In this moment, it was perpendicular to its normal position, as if someone shoved it forward and then shimmied it sideways to fit through the door where it now rested. I noped myself back upstairs and locked the door behind me. I was alone, but I had to get to work, so I opted to leave through the front door instead. I spent a great deal of time thinking about it that day. Perhaps we had bumped it. But the way it shifted and how far it went told me that that was illogical. When I returned home that evening, it was still in the same spot. I did my best attempt at composure and carried it back to where it belonged. When I went upstairs, I decided to say aloud, Grandpa, you know how much we love you. We miss you. But this shit, it's scaring me. And I don't think that's what you want. So can you please give it a rest? I kid you not, nothing happened after that. I then made a point to talk to him from time to time during our stay there. So he knew that we were still thinking of him and missed him. We moved out soon after our marriage in a transition to Houston, Texas, but are now back home in St. Louis. We've had plenty of random occurrences in our new home. Cups falling off shelves out of nowhere, loud bangs downstairs at night, my daughter swearing I'm calling her name when I'm not around, but nothing compares to the goosebumps of our first home. All those stories where people lose things and they think they've lost them forever and then they just appear again randomly like they really do blow my mind genuinely if you have uh if you follow me on social media you will have seen that I posted about Laura's amazing story so Laura hello if you're listening where she had a ring like a normal just a normal everyday ring that she wore all the time and then she found an exact match of the ring in her bathroom and the, the original ring had a bend in the clasp where she had caught it in a jumper and bent it. And the new ring had the same bend in the clasp. And honestly, it blew my mind. Like the story blew my mind. And stories like this do too. Stories of people who lose things and then all of a sudden these things appear again. And it kind of gives me hope that like, you know, I've spoken about my lost wedding ring and necklaces. And I'm I'm kind of hoping that at some point I get them back too. And I'm able to be like, okay, whoever is moving my shit around, knock it off. I'm also glad that you were able to say to your granddad, I love you. And I feel like this might be you, but you're scaring me. It actually isn't funny. It's less funny. Tricks are less funny when you're dead. I think that should be a mantra that people take into the afterlife. That jokes are indeed less funny when you are dead. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If at any point you can hear voices in this episode, voices that aren't mine, Sinead and Nick are downstairs recording an episode of their podcast and at some points the the sound sort of filters through. So if you can hear voices, that's what it is. I promise you are not haunted. Thank you to Grace, Kaylee, and Evie for sending in your stories. Remember, the last story came from the 19th of August 2023. And if you would like to send in your story, you can do so by emailing it to reallifeghoststoriespodcast at gmail.com. You can also check out the website reallifeghoststoriespodcast.com. And if you are desperate for some extra content, you can subscribe to the Patreon. That is patreon.com forward slash real life ghost stories, where for $5 a month or $2 a month, you get access to heaps of extra content, as well as every single main and mini episode completely ad free. And on that note, I shall see you tomorrow. <laughs>